I do remember of having this feeling almost every time. God, I can't believe it. Such a room can exist in the middle of London. Sound, beauty, water, the tinkling fountain, and it's so evocative. How did he create that? How did he have that vision? I think Leighton's vision was to create something beautiful, not necessarily orientalist, as we would call it now, but he wanted to create something beautiful. Also inspires a sense of curiosity about the person who created something so extraordinary. He was brought up in a very cosmopolitan, very international way. He spoke four or five languages fluently, which is unusual in those days. He suggested that he would want to become an artist. So the father sort of disagreed at the beginning and eventually agreed. And he said, as long as you become an eminent one. So that for me is so funny and so Well, he English. did, and Queen Victoria. And so wonderful. Yeah, yes. Queen Victoria bought his first important painting, his exactly. first really good painting. Exactly. So he achieved. And his dream was to have a house studio that you know he could live and work there. In the Middle East, you have a tiny door. You have to almost bend down to go into the house. And then suddenly there's a palace beyond. And this is the same concept. You get so many different elements from different cultures. You know, the floor, which is more into Roman in some areas. And then the columns, which are completely European looking. And then when you look at the actual tiles and the whole combination of things is fascinating. There is definitely a kind of influx of Islam and Byzantium. You've got two cultures not exactly. colliding, but marrying in a very beautiful, harmonious way. I mean, way. This, this, actually, this room is based on this palazzo in Palermo. La Ziza in yeah, Palermo. La Ziza. It's got these kind of carved corners, which again, bring the space in gradually before you reach the dome. It's, it's very beautiful and very considered. When somebody asked him, why did you build the Arab Hall? Because it was so unusual for a time like that. And his response was, for the sake of something beautiful to look at once in a while. I mean, this is amazing. This could, I mean, <laughs> this is so English and absolutely wonderful. The English understatement, I love isn't this it? country. I mean, who would say yeah. something like that? I mean, look at this. The effort. This is the original staircase hall. Sort of inspired by Venetian interiors. He was obsessed by Venice. He was obsessed by everything, really. What I love about it is these amazing blue tiles to connect the two spaces. And the, the color of these tiles were based on the peacock. Inserted them with some 16th, 17th century Ottoman and some Iznik tiles on the staircase to just make it more interesting. And by painting all the woodwork black with these highlights of gold, again, everything was tied in together, but in not an obvious way, it just sort of came together. My whole idea of interior design is that by the time I finished the house, is that it was there forever. I just went and tweaked it, you know, I just sort of restored it, but in fact, it was done from scratch. And the whole idea is that you mix different cultures, different periods, different things together. And this is exactly what he'd done here. So we're in the dining room of Leighton House here, which is a very strong contrast in a way to the very exotic, Islamic-inspired Narcissus Hall and Arab Hall. You would have probably come through the library, which is a Victorian room, then into this surprisingly dark dining room. Dresser there is a modern replica, very nicely done, with freezers above carved to sort of, not replicate, but to kind of echo with the carving around the doors. There's the same frieze carvings all around the doors, beautifully gilded. Isnik's inspired ceramics have been used in this room in a number of ways. So there's a sort of strong embellishment using these plates. The colours are blue and white and red, so typical Isnik colours. There's also a dish there, which is a modern reproduction of an Isnik dish. So you have the traditional motifs on both of these. You have carnations, you have tulips, the sort of classic Ottoman motifs 
the floral design that we see in the Arab Hall as well. So in, in these chini, these Turkish tiles, and in these ceramics, so there's a thread that flows through the whole house. And I think that's something also that people can incorporate in their own interiors, even if they can't create something as, as marvelous as, as Leighton House. This room is Sir Frederick Leighton's studio, a 19th century artist studio with a huge north facing window. Artists used northern light because it was consistent. They didn't have strong contrasts of light and dark and shadow during the day. So this was sort of perfect conditions for paintings. One of the aspects that's interesting about this room is the way in which they've used carpets. So they have carpets on the floor um, these sort of Persian carpets, wool carpets, and then they have carpets hanging and other textiles hanging from the ceiling. They would have created a very nice atmosphere at the time. They had colour and pattern, something that we don't do much here, possibly because we're afraid of moths. There's always the terror of moths eating things, but they're a very nice decorative element. Less Eastern influenced room, you haven't got the tiles, but what you have are examples of Leighton's work on the walls. It's his, it's his studio. There are sketches on the walls showing his travels. There are larger paintings. There's a section of the, from the Acropolis, the Parthenon frieze, the Elgin marbles. There's this kind of plaster copy of that. So lots of sources of inspiration for Sir Frederick Leighton. I think it's a wonderful room. There's a cupola at the end, a gold cupola echoing the sort of dome downstairs, so carrying it upstairs. But it feels like a very different space. It's a creative space. He managed to sort of bring East and West together. You know, it's not an Eastern house. It's not a completely Western house, but it works really well as a house. This area that you see here is the very last extension that he sort of added to the whole house. And the reason was that he had too many paintings, like he had too many of everything. He'd been given a lot of paintings by his artistic friends and he's bought some of them. And he had sort of quite important paintings himself, like the above the fireplace here, there's a Tintoretto that he actually owned. And that picture there in the center is from Mille. He has, he has quite a few, well, he had great pictures, but obviously they were all sold off at Christie's after he died, but you know, the whole management here and the restoration process and everything, they've tried to get as many pieces back as possible. That he managed to create this niche that you see here with the mashrabiya, with this sort of wooden lattice work, which would have been in a lot of these houses. And what they were really was for the ladies to be involved in the parties that were going down downstairs with the men, is they could listen and see people, whereas the men couldn't see them. Lots of cushions and very comfortable, and the women would be here sort of probably talking and giggling and things, but listening mainly to what the men were saying. He didn't really use this like an Orientalist house. He used it the way he wanted, so there were modern chairs here, there was a Japanese screen here. It wasn't completely, you know, the way they would have used it in the East. And that I think is rather nice because, you know, you just, you are here in London, and but again, you brought this, but you've got to live in it. Well, it speaks to him, doesn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Says, and I think as both as decorators, we would want to say that an interior should reflect the client exactly. as well. So in a sense, that's a, a, a perfect example to exactly. show that it should be about the individual and their exactly. story as well. 